Welcome, John. Yes. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of sleep from last night and so forth, so just trying to wake everybody up. All right, let's see. Here we go. So, um, this was going to be a co presentation with both myself and Left Harris. Unfortunately, there were some scheduling conflicts and Left Harris was not able to, uh, to make it. So I will be going through uh, our slide deck and talking about bogons and Martians. Sounds like something from outer space. There's that and there we go. Trademark disclaimer, just because the lawyers make me do this, because um, we have competing company logos in there, so. <clears throat> so, quick agenda. Uh, who is Team Comrie? Who is Code BGP? What are Bogon prefixes? What are AS Bogons? Um, why do we care about them? What are we seeing out there? And what can we do about this? And then some closing comments, and hopefully we have some time for questions. My name is uh, John Brown. I'm a CISSP. Uh, I'm also a commercial pilot. I've been doing internet things for way, way too long. That's why I have a gray beard now. Uh, I used to run LRoot DNS for ICANN many years ago. I was a past Microtech instructor. So I've done a lot of technical things on the internet and have participated globally in the NOGs. And as Carlos and, and his co-presenter said a few minutes ago, the NOGs are globally are what help build our communities and help build a collaboration. Even when you have competitors working in those not coming to those NOGs, that competitive side gets set outside and people come together for a common joint way of solving problems and improving the internet. So I encourage you, go and form a NOG in your area. Help grow that. Left Harris uh, is the co-founder of Code BGP. He has a Master's of Science from the Royal Holloway uh, University of London, and he is passionate about BGP routing and helping make sure that routing problems don't happen on the internet. If you want to uh, reach out, there's his email address and his uh, personal website as well. Team Cymru, who is Team Cymru? We are a cyber threat intelligence organization that has been for the last 15, 20 years being able to tell you the who, what, where, when, and why of malicious activity on the internet. Many of you know us from our community services that we provide uh, through our outreach program, our threat monitoring for ISPs, which is a no-cost service, our DDoS service, Bogon service, which we'll talk a little bit about. And if you have a C-Cert, you probably know Giacomo because he runs the C-Cert uh, program, assistance program, and that's another no-cost service that we have. Code BGP's mission is to empower users with real-time views and see what's happening with their BGP routes and help prevent route hijacking and help understand what's going on with network routing. And they do this with over a hundred different uh, sample points across the world where they're looking at routing tables and able to see what's going on. I'm not going to read all that, but feel free to look at the slides. But I will say one thing that's very cool about Code BGP is that part of their DNA, part of their uh, nucleus of their founding organization is the folks that were part of the Artemis open source project. And this project was also used by CADA uh, for doing additional route research and other information there. So these folks are really knowledgeable about BGP and routing and looking at it. So what are bogons? Well, bogons are traditionally routes that shouldn't be on the internet. These can be routes that are part of special use address space. So RFC 1918, for example, uh, CG NAT IP address space, other special use address space that may be assigned or allocated by the IETF and IANA. 
We have, Team Cymru has a service that we provide, which is our Bogon route announcement service. We not only list all of the Bogons of these reserved prefixes, but that we are also listing prefixes that an RIR, Regional Internet Registry, has in reservation, right? So if a RIR reclaims address space, before they assign that back out, they'll typically sit on that or hold that for some period of time to make sure that everything around that sort of cleans up and clears out before they reallocate it back out to the community, right? So in this sort of interstitial time of where there's, the routes are sitting there in limbo, Malicious actors are able to use these IPs, and we'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. But generally, these are IP addresses that should not be on the global internet routing table. Here's a list of the Martians, which is a subset of Bogons. So you've got your RFC 1918 space, you've got private address space. Um, if anybody spots the error on this screen, I'll give you a sticker. Um, you've got other address space in here that is used for specific uh, testing and so forth. Um, and we see both the IPv4 and the IPv6 Martians. None of these prefixes should show up in a global BGP routing table, either v4 or v6. So what about Bogon Autonomous System Numbers, or ASNs? So similar to uh, prefixes, there are ASNs that are reserved that should not be used. They're reserved for special use by an RFC, right? They are uh, not assigned by an RIR from IANA. They're not assigned or allocated by an LIR from a regional registry. You can learn a little bit more about that by going to this Manners website and looking at stuff about Bogons, Vogons, and Martians. Here's a list of reserved AS numbers that should not be out on the public internet, right? So these are unallocated, and these unallocated will change over time as more ASs are allocated. So you have to update and refresh your list to make sure that you have current information. But things, for example, like these RSEs are for documentation and examples. These are private ASs. And the 65535 is our last 16-bit AS before we flip over to 32-bit ASs uh, as defined by RFCs down the road. So why do we care about Bogons? Generally, a Bogon route is probably something that's been there because of a misconfiguration. Somebody hasn't configured their router properly. You're running RFC 1918 address space, you know, the classic 10.0.0 slash 8, 172.16 slash 20, I believe it is, or no, 12. Um, and you're running 192.168 slash 16. You're running those inside your network, and that shows up into the your routing table, and you redistribute that to your transit or to your peers via BGP. Okay, and that's just generally a configuration mistake um, that we'll talk a little bit about here shortly. Um, however, there are also prefixes that shouldn't be in there that are currently prefixes that are reserved that should not be in the routing table that do, and malicious actors know that and they make use of that. They will inject those routes into the global routing table and they will use that for DDoS, for spam, for other malicious activity. And by injecting it into the routing table and getting it accepted by a peer or getting it accepted by a transit provider, what happens is we now allow the ability for TCP traffic to flow, right? It's one thing to spoof an IP address just for something that you're sending out. But if you want to reply, there has to be a routing path back. That path has to come back, right? So if I send 
a packet, a TCP packet to Lucy Mara. Lucy Mara has to know a path to return that path back to me. And so by injecting a bogon, a prefix that shouldn't be in a routing table, into the routing table, this gives her router a way of knowing how to get that TCP packet back to me. And I can use that, I can leverage that for malicious activity. <clears throat> Bogus ASs can also be used, ASNs can also be used for route hijacking. I could steal a prefix or a set of prefixes, use a bogus ASN and announce those prefixes with that ASN knowing that I don't have attribution. I don't have the ability to say, oh, who is the person? What is the organization announcing these routes, right? And so without that ability to have attribution because the bogus ASN, the Bogon ASN is not documented, it's not tied to an organization, I can then go ahead and leverage that for malicious activity. Keep in mind that even if I do insert a Bogon through BGP uh, for TCP based attacks, the scope or the reach of that might be limited, right? It might be a regional thing as I was using my, my friend uh, from uh, Brazil as an example, if I'm sending her and she's accepting that route and she has her upstream provider has that route capability, that might only be local to Brazil. Maybe when it gets to Napa the Americas in Miami, that prefix gets filtered by yet another transit provider and so it doesn't pass on. But as a malicious actor, that may be all I need to do. I'm trying to mimic a bank in Brazil. And so I want to establish that connectivity in Brazil. I could really care less about establishing that connectivity in, uh, say, the United States. So what is it that we're seeing out there? So Code BGP and, and Team Conway, we've started to really look more into the routing table. We started to look and see what we see out there. And we're seeing a lot of information. We're seeing hundreds to thousands of prefixes and AS numbers that just should not be in the global routing table. We're actually seeing real live 10.x. I looked this morning and there were a whole bunch of slash 20s that all started with 10. And they were all being received by multiple BGP listeners and probes around the internet. And they all had multiple ASs in their path, which means multiple providers are transmitting and redistributing these private IPs. I also found IPs that are currently reserved within RIR as part of the Bogons list that are also not being filtered. They're being redistributed. They're being pushed into either peers at exchange points or transit providers. I'm also finding AS numbers that are not defined. They don't have an owner. They don't have an org ID associated with them. I'm finding these AS numbers that are being used not just as a stub at the end, but they're actually in the middle of the AS path. And so they're acting as a transitive provider for that address space and allowing it to go through. <clears throat> these are not supposed to be there. Reserved AS numbers that are providing transit, as I said, they're in the middle, right? Part of the problem also is, is that the data in RIRs are not being updated with some of those AS updates. I have a list of AS numbers, and, and I won't say which a, a, uh, RIRs they are, but I have a list of AS numbers that when you query each RIRs who is, it just comes back no record found. Okay, well, there's no record found, but that AS is advertising 70 some odd prefixes and there's traffic flow. So who is it? And when you do look up that AS historically, you find that that AS was allocated or assigned to a provider 28 years ago and was last updated 
28 years ago looking at historical data, but the current WHOIS information is blank. So we need to, we need to pay, uh, be aware of that as well. Our research is ongoing. There's going to be more to come. We're going to be, over this rest of this year, we're going to be diving more and more into actually identifying and, and documenting this, the networks and the prefixes and trying to push out there a list of these are things that need to be fixed. Some of this is already being done in the CIDR report and in other um, initiatives, but I want to take a, a little bit more of a proactive stand up in front and say to our network operators, what can we do about this? ISPs, you really need to validate your external facing filters. The prefixes that you use to the filters, I should say, that you use to allow prefixes to go out to your BGP neighbors for peering sessions or transit sessions or your customers, you need to filter. You need to make sure those filters are up to date and you are only allowing valid prefixes. What is a valid prefix? A valid prefix is one that you've identified, you know about it, you know where it came from, you know whose it is, and it is legitimate. It's not a private address space. It's not something that shouldn't be going out, right? You must filter what you, your downstreams. Yes, I know this is a pain, right? I ran an ISP for 17 years. I had several downstream ISPs. Sometimes weekly, sometimes monthly, I would get announcements, emails. Hey, could you please update your filter? Hey, could you please update your filter? I was like, yes, I can update the filter. Hang on, let me log in. Let me make sure that RADDB is set up properly. Let me make sure my filters are set up. Let me make sure my transit providers know that they should be allowing this through, etc. Frankly, though, that's our job. We need to make sure that we keep these prefixes and these filters up to date. I set up a MicroTik router to act as a dummy transit provider. And I had my core routers would always send full routing table to that router so that I could see what it is that my transit providers were seeing exactly. I could see those BGP announcements, right? You can make use of Team Cymru's uh, BGP Bogons feed. This won't remove the route from your routing table, but what it will help you with is not send traffic to those Bogon prefixes. We can set it up so that your router automatically drops traffic going to Bogon prefixes. You do, however, need to make sure you understand the implications to your network, right? Because we're going to announce 192.168 to you. If you're using that RFC 1918 address in your network, you want to probably make sure that you're not dropping traffic that might be internal NATed or internal private address space traffic that would be legitimate. So know your network. RIRs should please make sure that your data for AIs, excuse me, ASNs and IP records is up to date. My request is, is that if an ASN is not assigned, it should be clearly marked as unassigned and not just blank. Right? I shouldn't get a blank answer back. I should get a positive answer that says it's either assigned and who it is, or a negative answer that says it's not assigned and that it's clearly, unequivocally not assigned. <clears throat> so some closing comments. A lot of this is about network hygiene, right? We all wake up in the morning and we take a shower. We don't want to be sitting next to somebody that's smelly. We don't want to have smelly networks, just to sort of put a little humor out there, right? We want our network neighbors to not be stinky. So please don't be smelly networks. Please make sure that you are validating your routes that you receive from neighbors, including the Origin AS. Make sure that you're not redistributing a private AS that should not be in the global routing table. Take time to validate your peers and your neighbors. This is not a once and done kind of thing. You have to do this all the time. So every month, every quarter, what have, please revalidate, re-audit your filters. Make sure that that information is correct and, and valid. When you have an ISP or you have a customer that leaves you, 
and it goes away, they go somewhere else, please make sure you remove their configuration from your, your network. Remove the configuration from the internet routing registries if you're using something like RADDB or the LACNIC um, IIR or the ARIN IIR, etc. Right? If you need help with setting up configurations, feel free to reach us at outreach at .com. We'll be happy to show you. We have a whole bunch of samples up on our GitHub of how to configure so you can filter these things out and you can run a cleaner, more, um, uh, more hygienic network, right? I also want to thank CodeBGP for their help and letting us look into their routing views and the way they see the routing tables around the global internet and as we both work together to look deeper into where are these hijacked or these bogon prefixes coming from. Are they merely a routing error, a configuration mistake, or is there a malicious activity going on? So my call to action to this audience today is please take a few minutes, go back home, talk to your network engineering folks. If that's yourself, great. If it's somebody else in your team, great. But start to review and make sure that what you're putting into the global internet table is valid and correct and is not, you're not allowing bogons and Martians, both either prefixes or ASs from being transmitted and redistributed throughout the internet. And with that, I believe there's some time for questions, if people would like questions. I do have a translator in my ear, so if you're more comfortable answering, asking the question in Spanish, I'll depend on the translator to, uh, the interpreter I should say, to give me a, uh, an accurate representation. Uh-oh, I've got Carlos <laughs> up here. No, let's, um Yes, I'm going to sp speak Spanish to make it easier for everybody. It's not a question. Rather, first of all, I have a comment, and I think that the idea of validating bogans and ASNs is very valuable and is something that we all should start doing. Now, I have a comment on the RIRs files. You, John, mentioned that we should mark things as unassigned. In the RIR files, that doesn't exist. You have allocated, assigned, and available. And uh, uh, no, So as a comment for everybody, the only autonomous systems that you should see in the routing table should be the ones that are marked as allocated or assigned. If they are reserved, you shouldn't see that. And those that are available, you shouldn't see them because they are available to be assigned. There's a problem, there's an issue, a difficulty that is sometimes we don't know whether it's been assigned or not. It may be some organization received a block of autonomous systems. I don't know whether this is the case, but it is potentially possible that they received an autonomous uh, block to sub-assign, and we may not know whether it's been assigned or not. It may be appear as allocated. But that's quite, quite a niche case, and it should be very unusual. So, uh, Taking that into account, any error that you may find in our files of LACNIC, let us know because indeed we had cases where there were situations of legacy spaces that needed to be corrected because they were not well reflected in the registry. And sometimes it's very difficult for us to realize. So please, if you identify such situations, let us know. Thank you. Um, uh, so to, to respond to the uh, allocated, assigned, uh, available. Um, so the particular ASs that I was looking at, first of all, they don't appear to be LACNIC uh, of origin. And I'll protect the guilty as who the RIR is, but they were, they were ASs that were previously assigned to uh, organizations, you could go back historically and find it, like this one that I was talking about. It was assigned 20 some odd years ago, right? And you can find that in historical records, but when you go to that particular uh, RIR and you do a who is a dash H, who is dot RIR dot whatever, and you put in that AS number, what you get back is no record found. 
So my concern is, is how do we verify, since it's in the routing table, they're acting as transit, they're providing routing services, how do we know who they are? How do we talk to them if we need to? And that shouldn't, in my opinion, shouldn't be a no answer found coming from the database. It should, there should be some sort of positive response coming from the database, right? Yes, this was a historical, it's been deleted, it's now available, da 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 da, da so that we know what the status of that AS is. So that, that's, that's really what I'm trying to do is make sure that we have a good way of knowing what the status of something, of a, of a uh, identifier is. That was very clear. My only concern is that because it's, the state is unassigned, unassigned does not exist as a status, just the fourth that I referred to. So if you look up things that are unassigned in the delegated, you won't find them. But you'll find the four that I mentioned. And it's important to understand the semantics of the four statuses. I fully agree with what John said, that there are very old things in the databases. And these, in some migration of the databases or papers to databases. So although well, there are historical data, but they might have been in blank. And I repeat, if you note things such as those, Please let us know so that we can correct them because it is important. And I think that one of the fundamental things of the RARs is to maintain the updated who is register. And in the Lima event back in 2015, if I'm not mistaken, we recovered an AS that had been assigned 18 years ago and had been totally lost. So we made a presentation similar to this, and the person who had registered for the first time was in the room. That was, and he came up to us, and we could regulate the situation. Just a question. The Bogans conference was very interesting. I was looking at different vendors. I use a lot of Microtik, for example, for remote address. How can I communicate with someone from your team to do the configuration and implement the issue of the Bogans? Certainly. So the best place to reach us is right there. Outreach. Okay at Cymru, C -Y -M -R -U com. Send an email there. Mention in your email that you were here in my presentation, and they will route that email to me, and I, I will help you. OK. Muchas gracias. De nada. Thank you. There are comments. We still have a few minutes on the clock. I know there's questions out there. I know there are you that are sitting there going, gee, should I ask a question or not? Should I get up to the microphone? Please do. Okay, well, I think uh, that, uh, that concludes my presentation. So, muchas gracias. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. So I would like to invite Eric Diaz, who will be making a presentation on 